Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Berkur from Mumbai, India. Today I am going to discuss an obstetric clinical skills procedure called station of fetal head. I am going to take a deep dive into the technical minutiae of estimating station of fetal head by pervaginal examination as well as by abdominal palpation. I will also mention what's new in this topic. The clinical assessment of fetal head station is characterized by a significant inter observer variability. However, in modern obstetrics, introduction of high resolution ultrasound technology has changed the assessment from subjective and variable to objective and precise measurement. So, stick on till the end. Traditionally, station of fetal head is defined as the position of the leading bony part of the fetal head not caput in relationship to an imaginary line passing through the ischial spines of the bony pelvis. Remember, although we apply the word fetal head, it can also apply to other presenting parts, especially frank breach. Station is an indicator of the degree of descent of fetal presenting part, that is head or breach, into the pelvic cavity, and therefore it is a reflection of progress of labor. Methods of estimating fetal station have evolved over time. Initially, it was measured in one-third of the distance from ischial spine level to the pelvic brim above and ischial tuberosities below. Thus, the range of station was initially minus 3 to plus 3. As the one-third distance was difficult to estimate, it was later changed to distance in centimeters from ischial spine level. Thus, the range of station was changed to minus 5 to plus 5. Since the presence of caput made estimation of station by vaginal examination difficult, the method was later changed to estimation by abdominal palpation using the rule of fifths, which I will explain later. Recently, successful attempts have been made to assess fetal station accurately by transperineal ultrasound using concepts such as angle of progression and head to perineum distance. This beautiful animation illustrates the original concept of station. Ischial spine level is considered station 0. The distance from ischial spines to pelvic brim is then divided into three equal parts and designated as stations minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3 which is at pelvic brim. Similarly, distance from ischial spines to ischial tuberosities is divided into three equal parts and designated as plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3 stations. When the leading bony point reaches the ischial spine levels, the head is considered to be engaged and any position below that is plus and any position above that is designated minus. This animation shows the station in centimeters. Leading bony point at ischial spines is station 0. 1 cm above ischial spines is station minus 1, 2 cm above ischial spine level is station minus 2 and 3 cm above the ischial spine level is station minus 3, 4 cm above the ischial spine level is station minus 4 and 5 cm above the ischial spines that is at the level of the pelvic brim is station minus 5. The same applies to the position of the leading bony point lying below the ischial spine levels and is referred to as plus 1, plus 2 and so on up to plus 5 in centimeters. Here I am showing lateral view of station to highlight the fact that the path of descent is a curved or J-shaped one and not a straight line as it appeared in the previous animations, done entirely by using Keynote software and not by any other professional software. This diagram illustrates how to estimate station of fetal head by abdominal palpation using the rule of fifths. The aim is to assess how much of the fetal head lies above the pelvic brim using fifths of the head as the measuring unit. When the head is 5 fifth, 4 fifth or 3 fifth above the pelvic brim, the head is considered to be floating. When 2 fifth or less of the head is palpable above the brim, the head is considered to be engaged. Obviously, 
at the time when the crowning of the head occurs no part of the head will be palpated per abdomen now i will talk about measurement of head to perineum distance by per vaginal examination using an instrument called descent meter there is another way one can assess the progress of labor vis-a-vis -vis by descent of the presenting part into the pelvic cavity this involves measuring the distance of the leading bony point up to the introiders it's like measuring station in the reverse way that is lesser the value greater the descent of the head into the pelvic cavity in modern obstetrics head station can be measured objectively by determining the angle of progression or head perineum distance the probe is placed between the two labia in the mid sagittal pane the pubic symphysis joint is seen as an oblong echogenic structure ideally displaced in horizontal position and fetal skull as anterior and posterior tabula the angle of progression is the angle between a straight line drawn along the longitudinal axis of the pubic bone and a line drawn from the inferior edge of the pubic bone to the leading edge of the fetal cranium it can also be measured dynamically during a uterine contraction and bearing down where one can appreciate whether descent of the head is occurring or not intrapartum ultrasound examination is not yet used widely even though it is more precise and reproducible than clinical examination for determination of station of fetal head there is a linear relationship between angle of progression and station of fetal head because of which it is possible to convert the findings to actual station this table gives the conversion of measured angle of progression to actual station in centimeters remember as the angle of progression increases so does the fetal station angle of progression exceeding 116 degrees denotes engagement of head using intrapartum sonography there is another way to assess progress of labor that is by measuring head to perineum distance hpd head to perineum distance corresponds to the part of the birth canal yet to be passed by the fetal presenting part the transducer is placed transversely between labia majora and soft tissue compressed against pubic bone the distance from the outer edge of the parietal bone not molded scalp to the curved line of the transducer which corresponds to the perineum is measured see figure on the right in this particular case it is 3.2 cm as the descent of head occurs in labor the head to perineum distance decreases in conclusion i will say this time has come to use intrapartum ultrasound examination to assess the progress of labor using these two parameters which i have just illustrated for this one must understand the concepts and for that one must see youtube videos like this thank you if you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology please refer to my books modern gynecology modern obstetrics and practical obstetrics and gynecology and other books the links are given below they are available on amazon.in for purchase inquiries contact me on this whatsapp number also please like comment and share this channel and my other channel modern obgyn thank you i have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students these are clinical cases in obstetrics 1000 plus questions and answers and clinical cases in gynecology 1000 plus questions and answers these are also available on amazon.in you can also follow me on other social media platforms like facebook and instagram 
the links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.